as we have covered the part of you know different tools like forecasting as well as some tools to analyze external environment that might influence your plan for selling goods and services into particular territory now let's look at different sales planning models so when you sales planning models is an important aspect while devising your strategic sales plan one must be ready with what kind of approach with which he or she is going to meet his or her customers for particular sales with related to any product or service that the company is offering so let's look at different models that can be employed while going for the sales process so every company has a sales model a process of selling efforts based on implicit and explicit choices the company has these are the frameworks the sales models are the frameworks that enable the analysis and processes that contribute to the planning and management function of sales as the nature of sales functions considering them as a non exact science sales planning can be developed by many different approaches so every company has its own has its own sales model right there is nothing kind of you know standardized sales model which is practiced across industries even that many companies have invented their own kind of sales models as well why do we need sales models that's an important question because companies doesn't exist or business doesn't exist in vacuum there are so many kind of factors that affect the growth or kind of you know future of a company in a long run with time passing there are changes with respect to standardization of product or service design saturation of individual account and market segments and also sophistication of customers might happen over a period of time in when it comes to reusage or alternatives be it a consumer to consumer market or be it a business market like b2b market these things going to happen over a period of time you, your suppliers are changing your customers are changing kind of you know market or competition is changing so it follows a different path in the near future and for to tackle those kind of changes one has to have a solid sales model to plan to go ahead with and you know tackle those changes that are affecting your businesses so what are the components of sales model first is customer selection and qualification criteria that's a first and crucial step identify who are your core customers given the scope of your business strategy right how can you identify and get access to the right people at those customers as i said in terms of b2b businesses it's not that you are selling to a one person or one single customer it's a whole organization who is acting as a buyer but there are different decision makers that are available for example sometimes in some buying cases even representatives from different departments like you know one finance manager one hr manager even one supply chain or purchase manager they'll all sit together to you know going for a sales call and they will listen to the sales person's presentations and then they go back to their organization decide among themselves and then take a call so it's more like an organized buying effort that is employed by those companies again going forward how can you develop and communicate a relevant deal profile to sales and others in the firm right now coming to the next component is clarity about buyers and the buying process at and at the target customers so does the sales model align prospecting and selling activities with the relevant buyer persona and buying journeys what then are the relevant metrics for evaluating selling activities in that model so you need to understand more about your buyers and kind of you know the process they follow at their end and you have to have the good clarity about these kind of aspects and finally the go to market economics that is what does the sales model mean in terms of customer acquisition cost cost to serve different segments and accounts the selling cycle and the time to cash for the business and customers education requirements as well so if you are coming up with a new product and you want to sell it to your existing customer again it is more like you know having a new kind of you know customer and again interacting with him right from the start you need to make him educate aware about what why you are bringing this product to the portfolio that you are kind of you know selling to them so it's important to understand all these things to devise a different sales models based on a particular company and as and as these kind of parameters changes from customer to customer from businesses to businesses and even from companies to companies every company can have their own sales model 
which is different from other companies selling the same products as well. Then look, look, let, let's look at some different sales models that one can employ. First one is a consultative sales model. It is both proactive and reactive approach, right? You are proactive, you are doing some homework, homework before meeting to the client or your kind of buyers. And it's also reactive also. You will take calls in between the presentations or sales presentations for that sale. It is also known as solution-based sales. So you know that particular customer or a buyer or a business firm is facing some issues and you know that your product or services are the best solution for that particular problem. The consultative selling model requires salespeople to first understand exactly what they are selling and who that product or service is intended to serve. So it generally follows six step process. We start with research, ask, listen, teach, qualify and then close the deal. So at the research stage, you want to learn more about the prospective business including competition and growth rate. Once you ask those questions, you go ahead to asking for, you know, ask open-ended questions to better understand goals, needs and challenges that are faced by a particular customer. Again, for a particular product, there might be different reasons or different needs coming from the kind of, you know, set of buyers that you serve to. So same buyer or same customer may have different needs as well. So even the needs will vary across customers looking for the similar kind of solutions. And then once you ask these questions, you will know more about what exactly the problem areas that are they are facing. Once you know this, listen. Pay attention to tone and be an active listener. It's very much important for Tutti's businesses to listen to your customers. It's not like you listen to reply or you are listening to response. It's more like listening to understand what exactly going wrong with the customers. And then guiding the conversation to unfold exactly what are the kind of you know, root causes of those particular problems or issues. Once you listen, now come and teach them. Show how your product and service can solve the leads business, that particular challenges and all. And once you satisfy the client through all this kind of you know educating and all, you can go ahead for qualifying the sales lead. So determine whether your lead is qualified based on the information you have gathered. And once you are sure that the particular customer needs this product or service and he's well, very well satisfied for that, you go ahead and close the deal. The prospect has built a relationship with you now and you should feel motivated to buy. And at that time, you kind of, you know, pitching for closing the sale. The core principle across the consultative sales model is that the salesperson or representative cares more about their customers or lead than do about making money. So the focus of the consultative sales model is to help out your customers, to you know, remove those problems, identify some solution for them and give them solution that can help them to achieve their objectives. So it's more like satisfying their own goals, you know, helping them to achieve their own objectives where your product or service or solution can only help them to achieve those kind of goals and objectives. Another model here is customer centric sales model. Again, it looks similar to what we discussed earlier, but it's different than that. So customer centric selling focus on creating a great customer experience, right? So earlier we were focusing more on what exactly the areas of, you know, uh, problem areas faced by a customer and then you are consulting him to take your product or service as a solution. Here it is more about creating great customer experiences out of out from competition that's what Michael Bosworth defined it and even in 1997 when Steve Jobs came back to Apple you know he said one of the things I have always found is that you have got to start with the customer experience and work backward to the technology. It should not like your technology dictate what customer experience will get, right? What kind of experience the customers will get. It's more about know what ex exact customer experience you want to deliver and accordingly you work backward to make your technology deliver that kind of a promise. So you can't start with the technology and try to figure out where you are going to try to sell it. So that's what Steve Jobs said. So it's more about putting customer first. So there are eight key elements of customer centric selling. First is engage, right? Engage in conversations with your customers to discover a problem you can solve. Then ask relevant questions instead of offering an opinion. 
do not start giving your opinion without understanding what exactly is wrong. Then cultivate a relationship and focus on solutions to your customers problem, gain their trust that is the next step. Once you gain their trust, target decision makers instead of end users. Promote uh, usage rather than features, relate the product to their situation that is next step. Going further, build relationships to garner quality sales rather than focus on sales numbers and adjust your sales cycle to follow the buyer's timeline. For example, many buyers need credit kind of you know terms and all. So, you need to find a way to balance between their credit line as well as what you are expecting from them. And then ultimately empower, empower customers to buy the solution that meets their needs not to purchase your product, right. Give them that facility that they feel that sense of empowerment that they identified something and they then themselves have discovered the particular solution or kind of you know kind of a remedy for those kind of problems. So, it starts so in broadly it has a four ways four step process. So, understand your customers needs first, speak to your customers language, do not speak a language that you know, speak customers language, align yourself with the customers priorities and elevate fears and use current customers to help sell new customers. So, you can use your existing customers because if we are doing a customer centric selling, you are going to have a good relationships built with your customers and that itself will help you to get to the new customers through them. Coming to the next model which is professional selling skills model that was developed at Xerox corporation. It talks about the four stages, first is need identification, then presentation that is a sales presentation then comes to objection handling and towards the end the particular salesperson will try to close the sale that is a closing stage. So, it is also known as selling by need satisfaction. Now, let us look at what each step has in itself. Why do you need to identify the needs? You know, it is important to discover areas of need and reveal customer attitudes. So, you are doing it whenever like you know at the beginning of sales interview to encourage the customer to speak freely. You can identify or ask some questions during the sales interview after the client gives information about difficulties, problems and attitudes. When your closure fails, you can also want to know why, what are the reasons behind that you know why they are not buying from you. When your evidence statement is not accepted, you can do this to know the reasons. You can also go ahead to raise the information about needs you can support and whenever the you know kind of sales closing kind of you know step fails or when a test is not accepted, you can go ahead with need identification step. Coming to the presentation, here what to do? Agree with your client's need, this is called supporting. Do not abruptly say no to anything that is coming to you. Appreciate what they are sharing, what information they are sharing and support that. You know you can say that oh yes I can understand what you are saying. Next you present the benefit your product or service brings to the table. So, it is more like uh, accepting what they are sharing and then relevantly putting your efforts or your products onto the table. Why to do it? To solve the customer's problem with the benefit of the product or during questions when a need arise you can be you know you can pitch in to satisfy a particular product or service how it is going to help them or to introduce important benefit that can lead to closing of the deal as well. So, you can different situations you can do different presentations like whenever a customer declares a need you go ahead and present whatever product or service you are offering. Whenever a customer makes a favorable comment about a company product you can again present that to your new client or a potential customer. You can present uh, this particular information as a link between any sequence of questions that reveal a need or information. So, is suddenly if someone asks you in between you can just go back and you know you can use out a different presentation or different kind of you know testimonial from your existing client and you can show that similar problem arise at the, their place and we were able to solve that particular problem with our product or services. Coming to the next is objection handling. There can be different types of resistances that come forward from clients when you are giving a sales presentation. So, the next step is to ob handle those objections or resistances. Now, these objections and negative uh, uh, attitudes can come in different forms like skepticism like you know they know that your, your product is doing this x y z thing, but they are not sure if your product is capable to do that or deliver that exactly. So, that is kind of you know negative attitude we call it as a skepticism. So, they are doubtful whether your product will perform or not on those 
in those scenarios. Indifference, that means like, you know, so what kind of attitude a customer shows, like, you know, everybody do that, like, you know, every toothbrush or every toothpaste will have kind of you know, similar kind of features. So what is the difference between them? In these cases, you can come to forward and give some kind of, you know, supportive facts and figures to put your things forward. Misunderstanding, it might possible that your customer has already know about you, but in a not a good way. And he's kind of, you know, having a misinformation or he has misunderstood everything that is there whatever he reach, whatever the information reached to him or her and there can be a drawback like perceived disadvantage like you know it's it's good that you have a product but how it will help me i'm not seeing any value in it so it's more like a kind of you know perceived disadvantage for me something then you have to come forward through your presentations and doubt handling to to have a targeted answer for these kind of different resistances and then ultimately towards the end you close the deal. So summarize the benefits accepted by the client and get the commitment in terms of you know, delivery of the products, payment terms and etc. Next, we will we'll talk about relationship selling model. Right? So relationship selling is a technique that prioritizes building a connection with the customers. So see how we are moving. So identifying the need, then we came into customer experience as a top priority in customer centric model. Then we just saw about uh, the previous model and now we are, we are coming with a relationship selling model. So rather than solely using the price and other details to sell a product or service, the salesperson focuses on the interactions they have with the customers, right? So customers are more likely to foster loyalty toward a product or service when a salesperson establishes a personal relationship with them. Take an example of again pharmaceutical marketing and or the paper people who are working in sales, selling of these pharmaceutical and medicines and drugs, etc. They build a particular relationship with a particular physicians in, in their territory and they know that you know what exactly kind of you know an USP for selling particular medication to that particular physician so that he can write that particular medication for their kind of you know patients. So this fam familiarity helps retain long-term customers and gain new ones because they feel valued by the company. And this technique of relationship selling works well when selling high cost items, like you know, there is a huge commitment to be received from a buyer or purchases that require higher level of commitment because these customers usually need to put more thought and time into their decision. Like you know, by buying like your whole kind of a plants or something like that. If you're selling those kind of things, to a market or to a customers, which requires customers or group of kind of, you know, decision makers at your buyers to be sit together and put more thought in and time into their decision. In those kind of, you know, cases, relationship selling is the best way to go forward. So there are different steps again. So it starts with doing extensive research on the buyer and their industry to serve as an expert on the call. The more well read you are, like you more prepared you are, the more personalized you can make the conversation when you are meeting with your clients or business customers. Make the most of your small talk to build a personal connection. Take the time to do a deep discovery. Don't talk about the product features until you know what the buyer's pain point is and why they want to solve it. Right? Create a mutually agreed upon agenda to set expectations and align the call. Be an active listener. Ask the quietest kind of you know, person in the room for their opinion, sometimes they have the greatest impact on the deal as well. Don't force a deal. Looking out for the buyer's best interest prevents churn and builds stronger relationship for the future as well. And once you do this, even if the deal is signed, follow up every call with an email that same day. Whenever you meet your client or your buyer, have a good system of follow up so that you are keeping in touch with him and keep in touch after the deal to maintain the relationship. And even if the deal is signed, you got the commitment from the client or customer, keep in touch with them so that it builds some relationship over a period of time. It makes you, it's, it's, it makes easy for you to you know, approach the same person or buyer again in near future. So it follows a generally a three step cycle. You kind of, you know, content attraction, you create content, you deep dive your research and everything. Then you meet them, you have a small talks through which you get social engagement, engagement with the particular customer or group of customers. And then you go for a sales conversion, right? And the cycle repeats, that's how relationship sales model works. Coming to the spin model. So no two sales scenarios are alike and neither are two customers as well, right? 
Sales organizations need to cut through the clutter and get to the heart of what a client really needs and that's where spin selling comes in. So what does spin selling stands for? So what are the spin selling questions? So there are some questions that you need to identify. Situation, S for situation where you establish buyer's current situation. Problems, identify a problem the buyer faces that your product solves. Once you know the problems, get on to the implications. Explore the causes and effects of those problems for buyers. Sometimes they are not aware of the exact threats or kind of you know future kind of problems. They, that particular small problem which is now can get into converted into a bigger problem later. So realize them that there are large implications of these particular problems and then need payoff. Show why your product is worth it. Sometimes you need to convey that not as of now, but how in future your product is going to help the particular situation or to solve those particular problems. <clears throat> so situation questions help you understand the buyer's current situation. The goal is to gather information such as uh, what do clients' current processes look like, what tools they are already using and how often do they use them. Once you know the situation, then you come to problem questions, which will help you to illustrate the different problems your product solves for your client. For example, you can ask, do you feel that inter-team communication is, is as good as it can be? Right? Sometimes sales team has to have an intercommunication between them so as to know the exact status of particular buyer which a particular team is handling. How does this impact stakeholder buying? You can ask these type of questions to know the problem areas. Once you know the problem areas, you can go ahead with questions, implication questions to hone in on the problems you have discovered. Now you know the problems. Now ask questions that shows the client why they need to be solved. Now once you know the problems, you can ask questions like how much time is wasted on inefficient communication each week, right? How much more could your teams achieve each week without those time sinks? And then have communication problems ever delayed your product rollout as well. So show them that what are the implications the particular small problem that is coming like you know there is a no communication between sales team how that it can be transformed into a bigger problems for a company like you know delayed product rollout and all and then once your client understand this kind of implications now you should come forward with your product or service and show that how this particular product or service can address their pain points you can ask questions like would a comprehensive product management tool increase stakeholder buying would that be available for your team so ask now put in your kind of you know need payoffs like how your products are going to solve those problems so as to avoid those larger implications that might be faced by a particular business client. So spin model one can add authenticity to the sales process and through this be the type of salesperson that listens more than he she talks. So spin model is more about listening instead of just talking what your products can do. And coming to the final model that is Miller Heyman sales model. Robert Miller and Stephen Heyman developed a methodology called conceptual selling as a way to manage the various stakeholders and relationship that exist when a B2B transaction is large and complex. So this particular model talks about a B2B scenario, a buyer and seller where both are business houses and it where it involves a large and complex kind of a transaction. So conceptual selling earned its name because it requires salespeople to convince a customer to buy the concept of a solution. It's not just product or solution or services, it's more like a concept of solutions rather than specific product or services. So the core of the miller heyman approach involves three steps. One is categorizing, like categorize the different contact roles by their influence on the given sales cycle, that's the first step. Determine a potential client's level of support for your proposition by flagging those who would support as well as those most likely to oppose the model. And then influencing that chosen crowd to help them reach a consensus for buying that particular solution. So this miller heyman sales model generally applies into a kind of you know services or solutions like let's say CRM software solutions or you have to manage your kind of you know material management section and all and you are doing some changes in IT and softwares so as to make the processes well. In those cases, for example, you then you start with who is going to operate that particular software or solution, then you determine who is going to, you know, potential support levels at those particular clients. then you go ahead, you talk with those people, you influence them to buy, and then you kind of, you know, give, go further and train them in order to kind of, you know, work out the particular 
win-win scenario for both of buyer and as well as seller. So, these are some sales models that helps us to plan for our strategic sales plan to execute the, that particular strategic sales plan that we do, that we have prepared. So, this kind of you know summarizes the final module that is developing models for sales planning. Thank you.